book three, Tunnels of Blood. Uh, I will say, going into this review, uh, Soaked of Freak, accurate title. It's about a freak show. Vampire System, very accurate title. Tunnels of Blood. Uh, there is never a tunnel of blood in this entire book. It's a metaphor, though, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, because the tunnels are like the veins and arteries of the city. I hate it. Uh, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> um, <but laughs> it's, I mean, the metaphors throughout the books are pretty shit. That uh, he says something at one point like it was an, as obvious as an elephant. I was like, that's about the mark for Darren Shan similes <laughs> and metaphors. Um, a tunnels of blood. They are in tunnels, and yeah. you know that there is the, for a brief moment. There's for the blood. Last th- quarter of the book, they're in tunnels, and there is blood. Now there is blood. I really appreciate this book for making you think that Krepsley is the killer. Uh, let me read the summary of this book okay. I've got, and then we'll talk about the opening of the book. It's holiday season. Mr. Krepsy, Darren, and the state boy are going on Christmas vacation. When Darren and Snakey find out there's been odd murders in town, they suspect Mr. Krepsy of being a no-good rotter, so they track him to stop him from getting to the next kill. But Mr. Krepsy is actually a good guy, if you ignore the child snatching from book one, and is hunting an evil vampanese, a spoopier offshoot of vampires. And Darren, the goof, has not only gone in the way, he's revealed to Mr. Vampire that he's being hunted and gotten Snake Boy captured. Darren also gets himself a girlfriend in town and uses her safety to plan an Ocean's Eleven style swindle where they save the Snake Boy, stop the Vampires, talk about holiday drama. Succinctly put. Thank you. Does, yeah. is, there, is there anything I've missed in terms of broad plot of this book? Um, there's a, bit, a lot of shopping. <laughs> In this book. <laughs> More shopping than I care for as a fourteen-year-old boy. They go shopping a lot, but he doesn't really have anything to do. No, and it's explained that they have a lot of money, which is weird because for the entirety of this book, Darren Shan is wearing a pirate costume. Yeah, <laughs> and everyone's got like an unconvincing fake beard on. So my first note about this is because um, at the start of each book, Shan has to explain what's happening because. <clears throat> The, the, the books kind of need to work as a vertical slice, right? Because they are books. So at the start, he has to explain to you what's happening. So in case you haven't read the first two books and you pick this off a shelf, you can at least follow what's going on. Yeah. So Darren explains that he's a vampire. And vampires aren't like what you see in the movies. So Darren laughs about people thinking that vampires can't be seen in a mirror. Yet he explains that they have weird atoms that can't be <laughs> photographed. <laughs> It's a completely unnecessary addition. Yeah, like, why can't they be folk? They have weird abs, and he brings it up again to, like, a it's, doctor. But he also references that as part of flitting, right? So it's like a justification for why they can do that. Their atoms are moving fast or something. Yeah. Which means they must get hot. But, yeah, it's also like, when when there's a more, there's a, a mortrician is looking at the bodies of something, and they say they, for some reason the news confirms that the six bodies that have been found in a murder are normal humans. <laughs> As no opposed reason. to, yeah. And it, they're like, oh, would they be able to know if they're vampires? And, he, and Darren was like, yeah, the atoms are different. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not sure they talk about it on the news. Yeah. If you'd found six bodies with different atoms. I don't know how close you have to get to a thing microscopically to see it <laughs> atomically moving. I don't know if a mortician, that's within his scope of uh role. That's what they teach you in mortician school. No. Always check the atoms. Um, Everett says that he's cold-blooded, which... There's so many problems with it that let's just not address it. Yeah. It's like the poisonous thing for Madame Ockton. Yeah. I was like, I have to now just be on board with this, otherwise it's going to annoy me so much I have to stop reading. The book starts with Gavna Pearl, who's a vampire general from the Vampire Council, from the Vampire Mountain, where all the vampires live, yeah. has come to talk to Mr. Krepsley. Mr. Krepsley's like, oh, you're here because I've abducted this child and that's <laughs> frowned upon in the vampire culture. And he's like, what? He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, no, that's not no, why I'm you're here. No, you're good, mate. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, so we, that that's going to be an issue later down the line, is that now we know that uh, actually what Mr. Krepsley has done is is pretty frightened upon in the vampire community. And also, um, Mr. Krepsley is just as shit at keeping his mouth shut as Darren is. <laughs> yeah. When Steve's like, "How did? what did you... I know you were speaking, uh, saw me speaking to Verholston. He's like, I don't know what's going on between you and Verholston. <laughs> Mr. Krepsley, as soon as he sees a vampire general, look. look I know I turned the child. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's the classic sitcom give too much information away. Yeah. And then the person's like, no, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking I was about talking this about innocent thing. I was talking about a completely thing. separate thing. Yeah. Thank you for giving me all this information. Edna Pearl. 
Gavner. Gavner Paul. Edna. Edna. <laughs> Edna. <laughs> every, every tertiary character is Edna. Gavner Paul is like, oh, I need to have a secret chat with you, Mr. Krepsley. Yeah. And then afterwards he tells Darren that Mr. Krepsley used to be a vampire general. Yeah. Vaguely important for the plot, but not really. Kind Just of it kind of lends him a credence that he's a bit more of a... It makes him seem like a much more important person in the vampire community, because at the moment he seems like an outsider. Yeah. And solid. He can, he can have, handle himself. He can handle himself. Yeah. He's hard. Yeah. He's, he's nails. Yeah. He's hard as nails. He's nails. What vampire generals do is generally they go around and they hunt uh, vampires that have gone rogue or aren't acting within credence of their laws. We're introduced to vampire laws also. Yeah. Um, Gavner leaves. Yeah. Mr. Krepsley is like, Darren, we've got a job. I've got a job to do. We need to leave. Darren's like, can I bring a mate on holiday with us? Like, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> so that's a kid. Can I bring one of my friends on Sounds holiday? Sounds tedious. And Mr. Krepsley's like, yeah, ask Evra. And Evra's like, yeah, sure. I'll come because my cold blooded snake sleeps through the winter because that's how cold blooded creatures work. And mm. they're like, oh, yeah, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Do you, a cold blooded creature, want to come with us to on holiday? Yeah. There's a lot wrong with that, isn't there? <laughs> I didn't address the cold-blooded hibernation element. The first Which time they I address in, in the, the fiction book. of the book. Yeah. But they go on holiday. Mr. Krepsley's skulking about. And while yeah. he's skulking about, Darren Shan decides that he wants new clothes because he must have lost his clothes from the 73. I don't quite remember what happens. And he buys himself a pirate costume to wear. No, Trusca makes the pirate costume oh, for Trusca him. Trusca makes him a pirate costume to wear all the time. Well, she has it. Yeah. And it fits him. And uh, they put... The snake boy in a fake beard and like Groucho mask <laughs> <glasses. laughs> like a normal human. Um, and they go around shopping for a bit. At some point, a girl approaches Darren and is like, I like your pirate costume. I watch you out of my window. Yeah. Uh, it reminded me of Bart when he breaks his like the real window episode of The Simpsons where he breaks his leg and he's spying on everyone out of, the, <laughs> out of his house with a telescope. Yeah, she's been spying on them. She doesn't have any friends of her own, really. They're not. She doesn't ever introduce friends. No, she's also a bit of an eccentric weirdo. Yeah, but she's like, "Oh, do you want a date? Let's go to the movies. Let's have a date." Yeah. Edna is really into this, <laughs> um, and he's like, "Darren, you should back." He knows a lot about women for a snake boy trapped at the circus. Yeah, he's they're worldly, aren't they? The people in the circus freak. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so he's like Darren these, this is how you woo a lady go and woo him Darren's pretty good he's kind of you know he's a little bit stumbly but over, he gets the girl he's just incompetent enough to let you forget that Darren Shan the author is an absolute eager man <laughs> um, but he gets the girl he gets the girl Obviously, she has to goad him he has, him he has into, a good snock yeah she has to goad him into it yeah and, he, and this is I liked he left and she's like, you're going to give me a kiss? And he's like, no. Nah, nah. Yeah, uh, like, awkwardly bye. leaves. I, 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 feel I feel you. I feel you. I feel you, yeah, I feel I feel you Darren. Fact. I feel you. And then he goes back and he's like, uh, can I still have that kiss? He climbs her wall yeah. with his super strong fingernails. He vandalises her house. <laughs> and is barefoot on the sort of trellis outside of her house, I guess. Yeah. And she's like, this is appropriate. Come into my bedroom and kiss me. <laughs> Would you like some bang? Would you want some fuck? Is writing yourself as an author insert into a book also having kiss, kissy time, kissy kissy time with a thirteen-year-old girl? Is that fine? Um, yeah, it's not inappropriate, and because I framed it by Darren looking back on his life and it not being written creepily, yeah. you get away with it being like just uh, nostalgic for him. Yeah, um, I've got two problems with Debbie. At one point in an alleyway, she says that she's scared of specifically vampires attacking her, yeah. which is very convenient. Very on the notes, yeah. Yeah, very on the notes. If you're, imagine if you were Darren in that situation. <laughs> and I've written, Debbie slags off my man Alexander Dumas, so, so fuck her, because she's like, the three musketeers? What a ball fest. Yeah. And I don't have any time for people slagging off my boy. First of all, is that a reference to his friendship with Sam? Yeah. Um, and... You know, the, the three of them hanging out together. Like, the three musketeers must be important, because why slag off that book in particular and not a Maybe worse classic? It. And she's like, oh, my mum makes me read the classics. It's like, the three musketeers is not a... Cl- like, it is a classic book, but I wouldn't call it one of the classics. No, it's not in the 
secondary school reading curriculum, is it? He gets home from their date, and they find out that six people in the city have been murdered, and they think it's Mr. Krebs. Yeah, it's a good reveal. Like, everyone's, yeah. like, sat on the bed, freaked out. It's a shame that the start of the book opens with yes. him already hunting Mr. Krebs, but it does help make it feel like Mr. Krebs could be guilty. Of this. Do you think they did that because the beginning of the book, again, is, like the beginning of book two where it's like we're milling around a new location getting to know new people new characters new scenarios and new environments and that's yeah. not very enticing i think darren shan the author has a problem with pacing um, yeah and sometimes he needs to say don't worry something interesting is going to happen after this shopping and date yeah <laughs> like um that it may be yeah, I don't know how you get around that. You're writing for 14-year-olds. Yeah. So you need to tell them something exciting is going to happen. I've got no real problem with it. It's a little bit overdone in book two. Because they're so short, you don't have a problem with racing to the next chapter. Like, unless this is a bit of a bore. The chapters are so short. Yeah. You, like, when you if finish you, a chapter... If you don't know like, something's happening, you could be like, why the fuck is this guy in a sailor costume? Yeah. But, it, like, you're relying on the fact that it's content that something's going to happen. Yeah. If you read the whole book and nothing happened... That would be sick. That speaks for itself as well. <laughs> you don't need to tell me beforehand that something's going to happen because I trust you to make something happen. Yeah, this is a book about vampires. Yeah. I feel like something's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then I won't re consume any more of your content. That's how that dynamic works. Yeah. So don't like, you don't have to, it's like a fucking laugh track. Like you're telling me, like you're, you're helping me with the content, helping me to digest it, telling me what to do and when to do it. I disagree with that. I don't yeah. need to hold my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, can, I can decide for myself whether something's funny or not. Yeah, I can decide for myself if what's coming up, if what I'm reading now is so boring that I don't want to carry on. Um, but yeah, so they find out that Mr. Krebsley might be a murderer. They track him for a bit, mm. for a few days, and then they find him tracking what Darren Shan refers to as the fat man, mm. which is a bit problematic, not PC culture nowadays. <laughs> can you not call people fat? <laughs> can you not describe people you as fat? You can't describe people. They track him to, like, he's doing something at, like, a meatpacking plant or... He's working in an abattoir. He's... Yeah, he's working in an abattoir. My favourite James Cameron film. I've got a problem with the scene because Mr. Krebsy walks past Darren and Darren's like, I would, re would recognise that red cape anywhere. Why is Mr. Krebsy doing espionage in a bright red cape? Yeah, he's already got blue skin. <laughs> he does not have blue skin. <laughs> Very important point, he does not have blue skin. Yeah, well, he's got a bright orange hair, a bright red cape. Yeah, he's not such... May or may not have blue skin. Yeah, he's got at least he's at least very pale. Yeah, um, he's a very noticeable man. He's got a massive scar across half of his face. Yeah, I do like the misdirect of them thinking that he's chasing the fat man and it being the Vampanese. Yeah, the Vampanese have been tracking this guy. Mr. Cripsley has been tracking the guy. The Vampanese has been tracking. They're about to culminate. Mr. Cripsley is about to fucking absolutely murk this dude. And Darren Chan gets in the way. Yeah. Baxton. Thinking he's saving the guy's life, but what he's doing is actually making the world a lot more dangerous for everyone. Because this is when we're first introduced to Merlot. To Merlot, the Vampanese. Great pun. What? Yeah, because he's purple. He's Merlot. The wine. The red wine. Yeah, because he's purple. Yeah. Yeah, like, like Merlot. You like Merlot? Yeah. Um, he's what, wearing... What's a Vampanese? A Vampanese is an offshoot species of vampires that completely drain their victims of blood they have different customs and rituals they believe in stalking their prey carefully and they mark them with three scratches on the cheek they can't kill people in their own homes and because they drink so much blood they're like bloated their hair and lips have gone bright red mm. and they're generally suffering from what appears to be adverse effects of gout i would say <laughs> merlot's also wearing a, a bright suit. white suit which in my head he's also wearing like a black turtleneck with it <laughs> yeah because, no I, I like that because like you that. can't wear a white suit and not have a nice little turtleneck and then we'll go with it yeah um, and then he immediately fucks that suit up by rolling around on the floor of an abattoir <laughs> 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 so he's already a very noticeable man why would you wear the white suit um, uh, and he kind of just does the stereotypical <laughs> and yeah, flees yeah flees like um, a cat and he abducts the snake boy. Evra, yeah. Because he's yeah. also there. We'd fail to mention that, but he's also part of the track and trace team. Yeah. Um, I've got a question. I've got a sidebar question about the Vampanese. True. In the first book, 
the reason Steve knows about Larson Crepsley mm-hmm. is because there's so much media about vampires. He's really obsessed with vampires. He sees Larson Crepsley in a book. Vampires, you know, they, they stick to the shadows and they look like humans, but because of the circumstances of the world, they they are forced to sometimes be noticed. And that is why there are myths about vampires. Mm-hmm. In the same fiction of the universe of the Darren Shan saga, you have bright purple evil vampires, which no one's ever heard of. Well, they explain that away by saying that vampires are the worst rumours about vampires. And people yeah. know about vampires culturally. But there's no... So you just explain it away as saying, oh, a vampire did it, instead but, of the but vampires. no one ever talks about purple vampires. No, they don't. But no one ever talks about... I guess you could say that because there's so many things wrong with the vampire world, that the people not knowing about vampires, you can get away with it, but it's shoddy. Yeah, it doesn't, make, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work back into the this is the real world thing. No, it's lazy. Yeah. Uh, but the vampires are... To quote Darren Chan, cool. I like them. Yeah, they're interesting. They're an interesting way for the book to go. Yeah. Well, you can't... You spend a lot of time justifying the reader's desire to be a vampire by saying Mm. vampires are good. We have these customs where we don't actually kill people. We've got these cool powers. We're not as bad as you think we are. So then having the antagonist of the book be other vampires seems like too much work for Darren Chan, the author. (laughs) <laughs> you have to have people that are inherently evil or bad. But even then, Mr. Krebsy says, like, well, they're not evil. I don't dislike them. They're just different. Well, I, yeah. I'm re- Which is nice. What nice I find touch. very interesting is uh, Shan is able to introduce, like, a whole bunch of nested, interesting philosophical dilemmas about, like, how you perceive life. Hmm. So Mr. Krebsy thinks vampires are kind of jerks. But he also considers them... He, I think he says they're like misguided cousins. Yeah, he respects their philosophy. He respects their culture, he respects their philosophy, he just doesn't agree with their practices. Yeah. Um, and Darren Chan's against this because he's like, hey, dude, they kill people. They're monsters. Yeah. To which Mr. Crypty says, well, you didn't want to drink blood because you're a human. You still want to hang on to your humanity. Yeah. But now you drink loads of blood. If another human saw you, they think you were a monster. And also human life is irrelevant. So... <laughs> <laughs> It is an interesting, like, nested, like, philosophy. And, you know, how far is a vampire from turning from a vampire? Because they can just choose to do it at any point, right? They can yeah. just be like, oh, I'll drink all the blood now. Yeah. Are they actually a different race, a different species, or it's just vampires that have different customs? I think it's just vampires that have different customs, because they make it clear that they used to all be the same, but then there was a there was a difference, and 70 vampires broke off and yeah. made their own... race war. Race war. Can't have a race war unless there's two different races. Can yeah. We? Right. Evra's been abducted by Merlot. Yeah. Um, then Darren is like moping about it, and Miss Crepsy's like, "Oh, he's dead. Straight up, he's dead. Yeah, he's like, he's gone, dude. Even though Mr. Crepsy is very flippant when people die. Yeah. He, he but earlier on, he's ready to move on, which I he... love about a uh, uh, you know two hundred year old vampire. Yeah. He's like, uh, well, how many of these adventures has he been on? Yeah. <laughs> this is his third or fourth <laughs> assistant. And yeah. Snake Boy. He doesn't bother to learn their names unless they've been around for... They'll be dead in two weeks, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Darren decides that they're going to hunt the sewers for him because he must be in the sewers because... Because Merlo Merlo appears comes and gives him a proposition. Yeah, where he, he spies on him and Debbie talking... In a street. very it section, there is a sewer grate to yeah. which Merlo is talking to Darren Shan through. Well, Merlo's very manic and hyperactive and... Um, Scary. He's like he's like the stereotypical st- scary. Like if you're writing generic bad horror movie, he's quite like Pennywise in that regard. Yeah, but I don't think Pennywise is a bad movie villain. That's true. Until he turns into a giant spider, <laughs> or bad villain in general. He's out of place in the series so far. Yeah, he's uh, just... the series had doesn't deserve a manic villain. Hasn't earned it yet. No. No. Um, but, but it, luckily they kill him off immediately. It so. wants to introduce you to the Vampanese. Yes. But it doesn't introduce you to a typical Vampanese. Yeah. It introduces he's, he's you to a rogue vampire. one. He no longer abides by the rules of the Vampanese. He's an evil version of the evil people. If you have Krepsley philosophising on Vampanese customs and saying they're just different, they're not wrong, mm. you can't kill one later on for just being a normal Vampanese. You have to have them be evil. Yeah. He also is pretty 
harrowing, like the fact that he cuts Everest's scales off. Yeah. I think it's referenced later on in the, in the book series, like it never heals. Oh, so Merlot's so all true. ever present, which I like things like that. It gives your book scope, uh, yeah. that you respect continuity a little bit. Yeah. And it makes the things are permanent. Things yeah. are spoopy. Because at the start of the book, someone gets their hand bitten off and they gets glued back on yeah. magic powder. But Where now... was old Hibby Tall when uh, everyone was getting the scales cut off? Now Darish has thinking, maybe I can't write 12 books where people can get their fucking limbs reattached. No, but I mean, at least he reattaches RV's hands later on. Maybe that's it. They just, hands <laughs> is fine. Get your hands cut off. That's not a problem. So then Merlo propositions Shan, Darren Shan, after seeing him with Debbie and says, I'll trade you Crepsley forever and Darren refuses Darren's like nah nah because now I have respect for Mr. Crepsley earlier on this is another thing a testament to Shan's egomania after he ruins Mr. Crepsley's plan Mr. Crepsley's like you're a fucking moron why have you done that and then he explains that he thought Crepsley was the killer and then Mr. Crepsley does a full 180. Yeah, he's like, oh, that's... You know what, you're right. And I really respect you. I respect you. You're a smart man. I'm glad to have you by my side. You know, no. It works as having a catalyst for Darren and Mr. Crepsley to trust each other more and communicate more. Yeah. By having that miscommunication be fatal or near fatal. But it doesn't work when Crepsley immediately goes, you know what, you're right and I'm wrong and you're a lad. And I'm glad to have you by my side. And also justifies my decision to have you as my assistant. That doesn't work for me. But, so now, because they've got a bit of patter and rapport now, Darren refuses to give up Crepsley for his best friend. Hey, Darren also thinks that he can... Get find. back. Yeah. He's, he's got a plan. A fucking Darren. egomaniac. <laughs> Darren started hatching his Ocean's <laughs> Eleven yeah. style fucking... Because they do the... So... The rest of this book is them hunting Merlot, yeah. Merlot. Darren turns up at the... And it really is framed like a heist, isn't it? He turns up at the at the at at Debbie's parents' house but, under the guise of it just being a normal Christmas. Yeah, so so from, from an audience perspective, what happens is Darren goes to dinner at Debbie's, has a lovely time, and he goes and tries to hunt the vampire, the vampires with Mr. Krebsley. Mm. They fuck it up, they get in an argument... He runs away from Mr. Crepsley and gets caught by... Merlo. Merlo. Yeah. That's how it's portrayed to the audience. Yeah. However, tsst, 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 what, what really happened in today's episode of The Real Hustle is Darren went and drugged Debbie and her family to later use them as bait. Yeah. Guilt-free. Guilt-free. Just in case his plan works. So he drugs those people at Christmas dinner, which hinges... On Debbie's parents being okay with them drinking wine, and Debbie wanting to and liking wine. Yeah, and also he puts them in the loft to retrieve later. <laughs> he, he puts the parents in their room, but puts Debbie in the loft. If, he, <laughs> if they never went back to Debbie's house, she just woke up in the. She just wake up in the loft. Yeah, if they just died. What the fuck? Yeah, where the yeah. fuck am I? And there's a goat in my bed. Yeah. What the fuck? There's a tied up goat in my bed. <laughs> 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 so, um. Then Darren manages to, like, wordsmith his way around yeah. uh, Merlo, which all of Darren's conversations to this point have just been him shouting at people that he doesn't like stuff. Yeah. So him being, like, this wordsmith that can talk to Merlo and win him round and trick him into, into this ploy is pretty stupid. And his ploy is that he's going to take the Vampanese to his girlfriend's house and give it to him as a gift in exchange for his friend and his life. Mm. That's that's the trade-off. Because he convinces the Vampanese that if he did kill him, he'd be hunted by the Vampire Generals, which is true, mm. but it's a pretty hard sell to sell to a fucking manic person. Yeah. And also that he doesn't like snake blood, which is also true. Yeah. It shows you that Vampanese have to be treated like genies, in that if they can willfully <laughs> misinterpret your <laughs> request, they will do, with dire yeah. consequences. Yeah, yeah. So it sets up that vampire, and this is very important to his Ocean's Eleven style plot. <laughs> yeah. If you get a vampire that used to give you their word on something, they have to do it, yeah. no matter what. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> what's the? What's it's the just danger? Part of their culture. But this guy is a guy that's broken away from vampire's culture. So yeah. But he's still a man of his word. But he's still a man of his word. He's a man of his word. Whatever that's worth. Uh, which Dan is not because this is all a lie. 
So they take him to Demi's room. He attacks her with a sword immediately, which I didn't think was the best way to get the blood out of someone and drink it all. That's a good way to have all of Honor's blood somewhere else than inside Yeah, he's got two knives and long knives. Yeah, so he slashes at her with a sword. Yeah. uh, Which actually cuts through a pillow, which has been placed just above a goat. Yeah. And then he says, why is there a goat here? And Darasad says, this is a trap. And then... After that, Mr. Krepsley jumps out of the closet. Yeah. After after they've explained to him that it's a trap. Yeah, and Krepsley could have just double-legged him through the window or something, like, while he was <laughs> yeah. up on the bed. But the the idea of Mr. Krepsley, the thought of Mr. Krepsley walking around Debbie's house, waiting for him, like, just picking shit up. Like, and then he hears them, and he, like, oh, runs upstairs to the... Flits, flits to the cupboard. Flits to the cupboard. And then it's, it's the slatted cupboard in all the horror, <laughs> and he's just watching... Uh, that brings me a lot of joy, thinking of Mr. Krepsky like that. Yeah, like, I feel like he should have just, like, had a high-powered sniper rifle and be aiming at her bedroom window. It's the classic, it's again Harry Potter problem, where they're so reliant on being vampires, or in Harry Potter's case, so reliant on being magic, that they don't use real-world solutions to problems. Yeah. Voldemort could have just punched Harry Potter to death <laughs> as a baby. Yeah. Why did you try and Nevada cadaver him? Yeah, and just set you up for a fail. Way, why? Why did Mr. Krepsey fight? Just not use a, Just no, shoot like, him in the head. In hand-to-hand <laughs> combat. You're in Canada. You can get a gun. This whole plan plays out perfectly. Not not a fucking single hitch. Uh, Mr. Krepsey kills the Vampanese in hand-to-hand combat, despite yeah. not having a weapon. Just effortlessly. Doesn't keep up with any training regimen. Doesn't and live does a healthy life. him? Yeah, he slices his guts open. Yeah, they stab him in the belly and then Which, rush Do they out. clean up all the blood? Yeah, they do. Okay. They don't tell you how That's... they do it, but they say we, we do that. <laughs> we do that. We put a new carpet. Everyone's got new... lino <laughs> in every room. <laughs> He's cut open her duvet and her mattress. Did you get her a new mattress and duvet? Yeah. Oh, they set up the Christmas he tree for her room. room. They, they clean the room and set up the Christmas tree while Evna's still hung upside down in the tunnels of Yeah. Uh, so they're just fucking about, basically. I'm just going to let you say whatever name you want forever. <laughs> I'm not going to pick you up on it. Evredra. Ev- um, so they're just fucking about. And he's sort of just hung upside down. Doesn't know if they're alive or not. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, he's like, oh, I'll leave a, my girlfriend at a Christmas tree. Like, mm, I think that your friend being hung upside down in distress is more important yeah. than you spending half an hour setting up a Christmas tree. Poor grasp of priorities. Though, yeah. The problem with the ending of the third book... One of the problems, the main problem <laughs> at the ending of the third book, is that it doesn't have anywhere to go now. There's no cliffhanger. There's no, we're, next time we're going to do this. Does he say we I have mean, to introduce you to the generals? I mean, the, the, the start of the book is the part that sets that up, where Miss yeah. is like, I'm going to take it, to, the next time we have a vampire party at the Vampire Mountain, I'm going to bring my vampire's assistance to the vampire generals, yeah. and they're going to decide whether it was okay that I did this. Yeah. Or they'll kill him. Or they'll kill him. <laughs> so what's the last paragraph of the book? Yeah, it's just him fucking making the Christmas tree. Yeah. Krepsy doesn't even say, like, right, we need to dip, we need to go to Vampire Mountain. Yeah, there needs now. to be an extra, like, little conversation. I hope that what we've done here today in saving these people and stopping these vampires will give us some extra weight when we explain to the Vampire Generals what I've done with well, abducting this child. Um... Darren, we need to inform, inform the Vampire Generals of what I've done. There may be some repercussions from the Vampanese. Also, yeah. I need to introduce you um, because I've committed a terrible crime in vampire <laughs> culture. So you need to be presented to the Vampire Generals. Sorry, whoops. Um, and that's all three books. Insert uh, Kerber it's, Enthusiasm. Yeah, insert whatever you want. Uh, that's all three books. Do you have any final comments? I words? feel like... Um, we nitpick and criticise this book, these books a lot because they deserve that. But also, I think they're good. Yeah, I, I think like that they are. They have great pace. I think for their target demographic of 14-year-old boys, they're perfect. Yeah, I'm definitely going to give this to some 14-year-old boys later on. <laughs> all these <laughs> copies. All these copies I know I'm trying to find the manga. Your slide panel van. <laughs> I'm interested to read the manga. I, I think there's a lot to like about it from... A teenage boy's perspective. Yeah, I think it does a good job in justifying your because you, when you're a kid, you want crazy powers. Yeah. I want it to be a Saiyan. I want it to be a vampire. I want it to be extra, extra special and superhuman. Mm. And that comes with a moral problem if you're a vampire because you have to kill people, and it completely circumvents that. 
and I think that's clever. Yeah. I think that's, that's great. 